My background is that uh, an MD PhD and then I did residency and uh, stayed on faculty at Johns Hopkins. I had a clinical focus and a research focus of prostate cancer and was involved in prostate cancer genomics for a while. Um, had integrated with molecular companies like uh, Decipher uh, early on and did some work um, with them in development and it's been nice for me to see that come into my clinic. In my clinic I routinely use molecular testing um, because it serves as a, as a valuable adjunct to other uh, clinical pathologic features um, in patient decision making. And that's sort of the way I see most of the world going to really do precision medicine for, for these patients. The role now mainly looks at, you know, whenever someone's diagnosed with localized prostate cancer, the first decision is, do I have to treat at all, or can a period of surveillance um, be appropriate? And, uh, you know, from lots of different uh, um, well-performed prospective um, kind of cohorts and also some um, randomized control data, um, there's men that can go all the way up to a favorable risk categoriz categorization that might be, that could be candidates for active surveillance. So that is one of the major wheelhouses for my low risk and my favorable intermediate risk disease to decide on surveillance or not. I think that genomics is a huge adjunct in that, in that, uh, in that sphere. There's only about 10% of those patients that will have a high risk molecular score, but if they have a high risk molecular score, those patients um, act more like um, truly unfavorable intermediate risk patients in my, in my mind. There's some nice work by Spratt and others that kind of uh, suggest this. And I usually tell them, that 10% of the, of the folks, that you know, we should not think about a surveillance strategy. Um, in the lower risk patients, um, and, and even in some very low risk patients, there is a, um, still a clinical question on surveillance, if you're gonna put them towards surveillance, about how often do you have to monitor them by an invasive procedure, like biopsy. In some of those patients, I do get some value from genomics up front because it will tell me how quickly that tumor is proliferating or give me a sense of that. And so I can have, you know, um, so I can then make my ascertainments on, um, you know, when I wanna do my next monitoring beyond PSA. So that's a favorable risk group, I would say, particularly as you get to the less favorable part of the favorable risk group, the genomics becomes more and more important. And then there's the emerging area, which is in the unfavorable intermediate or intermediate risks, high, high volume favorable intermediate that you're going to treat and questions about what you want to treat them with. And I think particularly it's been helpful for me when I make decisions around radiation for those patients. Um, so if you take the favorable intermediate risk patient that you're going to treat with radiation, the next, next big question is, do you give that person a short course of androgen deprivation or not? Um, this is a, an issue that the patients um, care deeply about. Uh, most will recover their, their testosterone, but there's a lot of toxicity. There's a lot of data that the um, over-treatment rates of short course ADT in, in favorable intermediate risk and, and even for some unfavorable intermediate risk may be very high. Here is somewhere where at least retrospective data with the um, with Decipher biopsy has indicated that if you're at the lower genomic risk, you may not need the androgen deprivation therapy to have excellent um, clinical outcomes. And that has that is a, um, a huge area of need in decision making, and it's an area where the data has been coming stronger and stronger. And on the flip side, if you're unfavorable intermediate risk and you have high um, genomic classifier scores. It might be a patient where you think about extending the therapy out a little bit longer. Um, um, but again, you know, it's an it's a area of, of high research, but I think also an area where we already know enough to be using it in our clinical practice.